God. Keelan hears the music when he gets the. Does that that hand signal means we're live? Yeah. I love the professionality here, Bloggy. We agreed on a countdown. Keelan, hit the fucking button. chin on the keep hitting my chin on the mic it's because you love it's like it I've never, it's like i've never done it oh before. see now my headphones sound too quiet can you bring really? them up yeah, yeah bring just, them up. just ever so slightly there we go right? uh sorry bloggy that was obviously some somewhat sarcasm there somewhat i mean last time we agreed on like a you know professional three you two, never know maybe he did one. do it you can't see through the let's go cork boy glasses Yeah, your mic isn't actually turned up. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, that's absolutely fine, you know. That's that's completely well, my Well, Keelan's pressing record on his jobby as a backup, and then you're the actual bad boy. Oh. He is a bad boy. Um, you, are the, you are the actual So bad that we boy. don't have all this fluff at the start, which turns off our viewers. Because, I mean, if we think about this as a YouTube video, which it technically is, we mm -hmm. should have really bold shit at the start. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. flashing lights and loud music. In this and episode, I'm going to fucking just... Yeah, I, was gonna say, I was gonna say something absolutely horrific then. Tune in yeah. and watch me squeeze a melon on my nose. Yeah. What? What? Um, squeeze a melon on your nose? Yeah, like a juicer melon. How do you squeeze it on I your nose? What fucking YouTube quick, videos do you watch? Do you I was gonna say something horrific. John, John, well, exactly. How, do you mean, how are you judging me? <laughs> turn it, turn his mic. Do you want me to turn you down? Yeah, turn it down. Turn it down. <laughs> He's down. I feel like my image currently portrays my mood. I actually woke up in the fucking worst mood ever, but really, I'm feeling slightly better now. I've seen your faces. Yay! Um, That's all right. We I do. Always, I always wake up and feel weird. I woke up and literally felt like I was going to cry. That's how. Really? I, yeah. And then I went for a dog walk and still felt like that. Um, hi, positivity. Fuck <laughs> off. Let me take off this. I'll take off this ridiculous outfit. I'm wearing the. It's court. okay to feel like that sometimes. It is. Just I'm, don't mask it. All right. Like I'm doing exactly now by being like in glasses and, and, and be like, let's do a podcast. <laughs> no, um, it's fine. Hold on, let me take my hood down. Chilling. Shout out Bloggy for the gilet. I think it looks lovely. Yeah, it does look good. Did you rip into gilets a while ago? Like, did you? I probably. Yeah, I yeah, think I'm you probably did. a massive Bloggy, hypocrite. Did he? Uh -huh. I feel, I feel, 100%. I feel like you, you were like, well, I don't understand it because, like, wouldn't you just put a coat on? I literally walked around with it in the office with it on because it was quite cold. The thing is, I'm that guy who like hates on something until he doesn't, and then he loves it. Yeah, I'm a hypocrite. But, but to be so. fair, like, the transition for you wearing that was literally like to make you warm, and it worked. It's not well, really I forgot long. a jacket, and I my sleeves, but I, uh, my arms are cold. Yeah, like it's fully just, yeah. Um, not style, it's just warmth. For you. Oh, all right. Firstly, show my hand. Well, I, I haven't got awards, don't worry. All right. This is our commitment. Oh, that's what it meant. This is our commitment to, oh, oh bloody hell. Let's do a proper shake. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, to, to basically being consistent. So yeah. like, let's say, I don't know, you get COVID or pregnant or something, you have to take maternity leave. We will just fill in guests so ultimately or it's I'll you and it me from hospital if I'm pregnant. yeah 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 we do it like or vice versa it's much more likely that i'm probably going to be out of the picture due to you know having yeah. a fucking child that's fine um i mean i've got bloggy here as well so yeah so it's like we are basically we're just vocalizing our commitment to trying to do more frequent episodes mm -hmm. um yeah. i mean we did yeah we spoke about that like not too long ago yeah. if one of us gets ill of anything we should just push for it i mean at the end of the day we just Having a little talk, so. <laughs> Having a little chat. Yeah, little chat. Jared Abbott did message me and just say, just do an hour of music, fuck the haters. <laughs> so maybe we just do that. One day we should. Yeah. Like, uh, you know when people do like Christmas podcasts, or I don't know, podcasts, but some sort of Christmas. Screw thing, Pip they, does they, drunk cast and they just, yeah, exactly. it's like four hours long, yeah. You know, we should just do that and have no plan and probably end up just talking about music. Very true. Um, before we, we go any- all our listeners. Yeah, before we go any further, Camilla's GoFundMe, I spoke about it on the last episode with Travis, I think. I don't think I spoke about it on the Ed one, which is next week. Um, it's actually doing fucking well. Like, well done to everyone who's donated money because she's raised a, a really good amount. I mean, keep going, obviously. We kind of, prior to her setting up the GoFundMe, are, I have been, planning and she's been working on uh three three products we're unsure if it's definitely going to be exactly what it's going to be like t-shirt crew neck hoodie etc um but obviously camilla's an amazing artist so we have some stuff in the works which we're hoping to get out as soon as possible but obviously clothes don't appear overnight um so by then you might have given her all the money she needs but then we're still going to give her money from that as well because it's her art mm-hmm 
Uh, but yeah, you can look out for those. So, um, did you, sorry, did she? Did you mention how close she is? I haven't checked. I actually can't. I haven't checked today. But she she raised like over four and a half grand, I think. Yeah, out of like too. seven, which is sick. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, well, I think we could get her. There. It's because she's got. I mean, the surgery, but then there's like she's gonna have so many rehab appointments afterwards, which mm -hmm. are all like you pay for the appointment or whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, she has not had the best luck. No, really, really not at mm -hmm. all. Like just a year of savagery, and it was like, oh, I'm finally getting a bit better. And yeah, then starting to train stab. a bit, and then bang. Yeah. And it wasn't training. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was it's always not training. Skateboarding. It's always not training. Skateboarding is a fucking ankle trap, like yeah, yeah. throughout. And the worst exactly. part is she rolled her ankle. I think she, I think it was on like a penny board. I don't think she was like yeah, skating, yeah. like trying kickflips. She rolled her ankle, so was taking it easy on that ankle, and I think was then riding a board, I am maybe in transit. I don't know, and basically then just snapped it. So fun. <sighs> um. Yeah, where do we begin? I don't. Yeah, I just don't really want to talk notes. about anything, to be honest. I just want to wallow, wallow in misery. I mean, we have got some fucking important stuff to talk about, i.e., trousers, which is probably a contributor to my misery. Yeah, um, um, but we should maybe talk about the uh, the new series that has just started. Yeah, yeah. Ten um, questions that we had. We kind of had planned for a while, and even with the old place, we were. That's weird. Yeah, we probably would have done it in the old place if we. Yeah, I mean, you like finger out. <laughs> you wanted to ages ago. I remember you were like, we should do a video that was like, because yeah, there's, there's the more skaters. specific stuff. Yeah, because the skate there's I don't know, I've forgotten what channel does it, but they do like skaters' favorite skater or they do favorite video part, and then all these question videos. So I think we were gonna go with something more specific, but then it, it, I, I think this idea of doing ten questions. Well, I think be anything is so much better because. And also those questions are in there because it was like, we don't want to just, anything. we don't just want to do like, oh, what's your favorite athlete? Because then it's like, you're just yeah, talking about one thing. 10 minutes of that would be not. But it, <laughs> it gives us the opportunity for like, if Ed's in and that question mm -hmm. comes up and then he goes, why well, I actually need to change that question because currently it's like favorite athlete and everyone's like, uh, Dom, Travis, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. I want to change it to favorite up and coming athlete. Because the yeah, whole idea of, of that question is to try and give a bit of spotlight mm -hmm. to like, someone you guys don't know about. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't, I uh, don't know if anyone's listening and hasn't watched it, but we have got a new series that we've started that literally just sits down athletes and they pull out a random question out of a fishbowl and they do that 10 times. Could be parkour related, could be not. And yeah. it brings out like quite interesting answers. To anyone who kind of had, we've had a bit of feedback on the first one that went live. We've already shot like six maybe. Mm -hmm. So if your sort of feedback, so to, per se, or if we, we want more questions as well is not in the next like however many that's, don't, that's don't think point. we're being ignorant yeah. so to speak <laughs> the tricky thing is like drew drew commented he was like this is sick but go deeper and it's tough because mm -hmm. we've had this discussion internally we kind of what we're trying to do in here is create a few streams of content that are easily replicable and are, are quite easy to edit and get out and, and things like this and the podcast is obviously one of them we've got this camera rig which makes things efficient mm -hmm. and the idea of the setup out there with the interviews is kind of just to have a thing that we can like quickly sit them down and it's like because i mean i could happily go mega deep with someone for an hour but that's kind of why we have the podcast yeah so i don't know like i, I kind of i get why that environment feels almost better for deeper because if you watch like i mean even like your one you start talking about like achieving your childhood dream early mm -hmm. there's space there for sort of an interviewer let's say me to be like well why like you know. yeah i suppose the more we do it the more we'll yeah we'll start wanting to hear more about something yeah. especially if we're in yeah like we could just quickly button and be like could you talk I about mean, that potentially or, potentially you know it might be something that we film that first and then we podcast because then yeah. actually if they bring up something there we could maybe then expand on it true here yeah and i almost like the because it is awkward and it is quite scary because all of us did it in the same day yeah and i thought it was not going to be scary because we we all know each other and we do podcasts and things like that yeah yeah, yeah. all of a sudden is quite intimidating and personal personal kind of, that's yeah, the word yeah depending on the questions yeah um somebody also said like use autofocus no use manual focus we're currently using what cameras we have available and our better cameras are actually on the podcast rig for uh, hdmi reasons uh mm. Yeah, technically yes that doesn't stop us using manual focus but yeah, there's things i need to fix basically mm -hmm. with regards to this and the other thing is podcast audio i still don't know if this is perfect i keep listening to like i'll be listening to someone else's podcast and then go and listen to a snippet of ours to kind of compare it and be like is mm -hmm. this good 
I think um, audio wise, I think it's yes. alright. Somebody commented on the recent Travis one being like mic placement, and I don't know whether that's like us being too close or too like obviously or whether, or whether Travis is sometimes speaking past it like that. Yeah, um, maybe. Or he might be literally talking about the fact that it's in front of faces because we do want to get arms, but there's some expensive ones that I want to get because yeah. I don't want to get flimsy ones because these mics are quite heavy. Mm. While, while we're on this topic of content and stuff, just because people are listening now and they probably have it in their minds, um, obviously we're doing podcasts and then we're doing the 10 questions, but if anyone has any ideas for other things that they might want to see, maybe similar in that avenue i mean the big thing is what we've been referring to as work week which is an entire that's the thing that they have i mean they've seen one episode of that yeah, but that's not like weeks ago like yeah but also it's like when it starts going and they start seeing the actual work inside it because that's like an introduction yeah you know, work week is see in, that yeah um and it and uh, it's, it's not going to be called work week but that's internally what it's we've just been an internal it. name because so we can refer just to it. the week of yeah. Work what we're weeks. trying to do is basically just constantly film what is going on and document stuff and I mean we got mm -hmm. some amazing technically amazing footage of this trouser scenario that I'm going to go on to explain in a minute mm -hmm. um, what I was going to say was just note because <laughs> otherwise you'll forget but if you have any like fucking brilliant ideas note down on your phone and then just <laughs> give us content DM, ideas. <laughs> yeah, DM. <laughs> yeah because some people might have some yeah the things. work we think stressing me out because like I just keep I mean I cut selects for like two episodes the other day and I still just haven't got around and mm -hmm. I'm just stressing that like the footage because we want to keep it relevant is going to become unrelevant unless we get it out soon and I just don't have the fucking time yeah and you guys are slaving Once away it's over it'll be a lot easier yeah I, I can yeah I can be working on that like yeah literally while it's going I mean if anyone wants to easier. you know edit some snappy vlogs for free or for clothes <laughs> then hit me up <laughs> um what was I gonna say um, you said about moving on to the trouser thing, but do you want to move on to that right now? Yeah, I think I think basically this this is going to go out later today. It's Friday today. I'm sending out. I've set. I, I've notified the pre-orders. That is currently my current stressor and headache. Um, I'm sending out a bulk email to kind of our subscribers, and I'll be putting up Instagram content explaining the situation. So that will go out before this podcast. But if this is fresh and new to you, I mean. First and foremost, if you are listening to this and you pre-ordered the trousers and you have not received an email or been in communication with me about this, check your spam and get in contact because there's some shit we need to sort out. Um, where do we start? Basically, spent fucking months, year uh, like a year working on trousers that we actually got to a really good level and we were really excited. I mean, people, this is the standard story almost. Like we, it is, but I think people have pr are probably desensitized to this story and they probably just think it's bullshit by by now the I, mean, most, I, I was so shocked the most frustrating thing with so this shocked. one is like in the past there have been factory mess ups where like i can look back and go oh, i guess like i could like that i mean a good example was one of the ato jackets i think i've told this story before like the sleeves arrived and the, they were way too wide mm. i had to spend like two and a half grand getting somebody in the uk so then hem the sleeves in because to fix them and that was because if I looked back at the emails, it was like, I'd said, oh, match the width of the, like, it's hard to explain, but I basically said match the width of the sleeve to a different jacket, but that jacket had cuffs. And what they'd then done is like matched it to, you see how this sleeve here tapers in? Oh, they matched they'd it to They'd matched that bit. it to this bit rather than this bit. So the sleeves were huge. Yeah. Um, but this one, I mean, like, we've got Bloggy here now. To anyone who, by the way, thinks Bloggy had any involvement in these trousers, you're incredibly naive as to how long it takes to make trousers because the only involvement he's really had is just helping with some sizing stuff, like, right at the end. But anything that's going to be made by Bloggy, I mean, the stuff he's already producing, like, sample-wise in-house is fucking exceptional. But that is going to be months to a year before we actually start seeing the, the physical manifestation of those in public form. Mm -hmm. um, but... We, we, I mean, the, we just got fucked. The trial, the, the factory, we had PPS samples, which is our pre-production sample, which were amazing. And you were really happy on, and like, mm -hmm. it's, it's when the athletes are happy, then we know we're in a good place. Yeah. Uh, I really thought this was going to be a hard one to nail as well. Like yeah. straight legs and also cargos, which we've, we've been fiddling around for so long because obviously the cargos we've done in the past, they've been good and people have liked them, but there's always something about it that we're like, how are we like, like what's slightly wrong yeah because i mean we don't know how to design clothes basically yeah. um so it felt like we got to the point yeah really with these exactly people. and ju just as yes. just to point out i'm saying like we got fucked and it sounds very very negative i mean all of us in this room are currently wearing them and they're technically 
a fine product but i'll go on to explain this so like don't let that put you off if you still want them or if you did pre-order them it's more that the factory we had the pps sample normally you approve that you sign off on that and that that is like a representation of the thing you will will then get Mm. you then have the factory or sometimes an independent party but in this case i I mean it was just a fact the factory did quality and sizing checks and they send over a quality report and you check it and they send over a sizing report and because bloggy was here i actually got bloggy to because initially when we discovered this issue i was like oh shit like we didn't read the sizing report correctly but we did they claim what was sent to us is the exact same size and the exact same quality as the stuff that was on the pps sample and that is just straight up a lie and i'm currently in the process of just starting communication with the factory to basically try and claim compensation or what i mean we're never working with them again obviously uh and all this stuff um but they've now closed because of covid and fucking yeah but they're lying basically i mean the trousers are fine they're just smaller than we were initially yeah, yeah. maybe they are lying they're small like basically if pre-orders have already been contacted they've been advised to size up obviously if they ordered extra large then potentially they might not fit them but like you you wear extra large max max is six foot he's wearing extra large the the straight legs are less of a an issue like the cargoes are probably the straight legs they were like extra large straight legs were too baggy for me personally yeah like the the ones that we thought were coming which was good because i didn't want the largest size to be yeah. One that I like if that makes sense. Yeah, my my uh, methodology. I should be medium. You yeah. should be large. People bigger than you should be extra large. Exactly. It's exactly. the way we like to think. Because about especially it. with the way these fit. But yeah, when they came, it's like, yeah, right now I'm wearing extra large, and they really should be large. Yeah, but like with people the cargoes, like David Cooper and you know six foot. Yeah, plus, exactly. Plus, you want them to. They're yeah, not. They don't alienate them. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's the cargoes that we had more problem with because they were just even smaller than a size down. But they're fine. Like that, I I it's, wore them. Well, I think. The other I mean, day. I'm wearing large cargoes now. Yeah. I should be wearing medium. It's it's basically because the cargoes are slightly more tapered. It yeah. feels more significant. Yeah, but like the biggest, the, the reason it was such a shock, I think, is because we were just so excited to see all of these yeah. trousers. Yeah, and it's the headache that we've already sold a load on pre-order. So I'm currently now yeah. basically having to amend like just a shitload of orders and and deal with people and mm-hmm. things, which is fine. Like I think we basically had this big internal talk of like we could easily have just been deceptive and just sent the shit out just being like oh pre-orders there you go there's your stuff and just put the stuff online for the full price 65 quid and gone everything's fine and then some people would have been disappointed some people would have wanted refunds etc etc um but we kind of had this big talk over a couple of days and like kept going back and forth on a few different options and we just decided to go basically full transparency and explain the situation which is kind of what we're doing here as well Mm -hmm and we're reducing the price because ultimately yeah. we had trousers that we thought were of a certain value and although we it hasn't affected how much we've paid for them i mean hopefully we'll get a bit of conversation but factories are notoriously bad at like that it's like prying money out of a fucking cold dead person's hands um we we don't feel comfortable selling them at full price so we're selling them at 45 pounds um so if you basically if you want cheaper trousers then you're getting cheaper trousers which is great and and like i want to reiterate they are not a bad product like a few years ago no i'm still i'm gonna wear them a lot and yeah them. a few years ago if i was making these i'd just be like wow yeah sick trousers mm. and like because we've always had sizing issues and things because i've never known what i'm doing but yeah it's just fucking disappointing and it's so like mm-hmm. it's such a knock you're just like oh it like how has it happened again yeah so but no that they're, they're, they're all right there we made it out worse the first day when we figured yeah we out. freaked out initially that, that's all but like then yeah we'll, so many fine. people will buy them and as long as you just probably get a size bigger you'll be like i don't understand what the problem is mm-hmm. like they're really not that bad but it's just we had higher expectations for them so mm-hmm. it's like getting catfished on a date but the person isn't like monstrous they're not an ogre they're just like you know the photos you saw were like the really good ones that have maybe been touched up a bit and what mm-hmm. you're getting is like not quite that yeah yeah so yeah and what we didn't want to do is catfish people there you go so anyway um who skipped that who skipped trouser talk <laughs> joking hitting that fucking like yeah, forward like, 30 no, seconds no, don't want to hear it again don't want to hear it again um so main topic yeah although let me just uh i just remember yeah you care no, no no we we are starting to get voice messages um i we have a thing if you go on our website if you go on the podcast page you can send us voice messages we're starting to basically build a collection of funny stories 
uh, a guy called Miles Ross, who is uh, American. He trains with Ethan. Yeah, I know him. He, he literally just before this just sent in like four, it's called like Ethan Story Worth worth it or something we won't listen to it this time because i want to build up enough um <laughs> it's like four messages and it's like five minutes long or something and it's, it, it, it's about it him talking about ethan yeah he said like it's worth the length or something um so oh. we've, we've had a lot of people sending us like weird stories about being kicked off of spots so if you have any like insane stories about getting kicked off of things that will make us laugh or you know send that in um obviously we've got people just sending in like penis stuff like that yeah, like we're not gonna play funny noises i say we're not gonna play the stupid ones we'll probably play the stupid ones but yeah send in some voice messages don't be don't be scared i feel like a lot of like people are like oh i don't want to i don't want to do it you just fucking press play and press record and uh-huh. send it in um yeah we i kind of just said because we, what we're trying to do as we said previously is one episode guest one episode us one mm-hmm. because j- just in case we can't get guests consistently um so I put it to Instagram and I said, what should we talk about? And there was a reoccurring topic that kept coming up, which was Keelan. Well, I don't know if it's that, sorry, I've just ruined your that was. I mean, that was your opportunity to say something. It was more, I just, I, I always talk. <laughs> just, I could have, I just made up a different one. You could have just been like anal beads. Yeah. Right. Wow, I'm imagine just... if that was the reoccurring topic. <laughs> I'm like, come on guys, I know you know <laughs> so much about them. Um, what does parkour look like in 50 years? Yeah. Well, it says what does like what will what will parkour? Yeah, I think it's just, it is an interesting topic. Um, I, we've probably touched on it before, but there's a few different uh, brackets. That's like, interesting though, because if we it'd be more interesting to actually talk about it specifically in fifty years rather than just the future of parkour, because I think everyone talks about the future of parkour. Yeah, but yeah, specifically yeah. in fifty years' time, I wonder what that'd be like. Because oh. I will still be alive. Wow, I was literally about to say, hopefully, I'll be dead. <laughs> What uh, what age would that be? I'll be eighty one, almost eighty two. <laughs> I reckon I'll be I'll be lucky if I make it to the end of this year. So we'll see what happens. Um, I shouldn't be laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs> Mental health. Um, well, I prefer to laugh at anything. Well, I feel like I'm the one laughing at myself, so it's fine. Uh, oh, now people are going to DM me. Do it. To so anyone who does message me, not about mental health matters but just like i i in the last year i think i've ignored more and more and more people mm. and it feels savage but like my dad messaged me the other day and i still haven't responded to him my mm. best mate messaged me the other day and i have not i kind of just need to just protect my that sounds really like self i just i just i'm just like i, I mean you can tell me whatever you want because i ignore so many people even you you remember but Sometimes. i just I, there's i can't I, i've been so guilty of taking on too much and like people are like oh can you watch this video or can mm. you do this and can i do that and and things and it's so easy to, to respond and then you've got to deal with the like either the yes or the no or the maybe yeah and now i'm just like uh, and i feel like a fucking scumbag but like no but you can't i don't know it, especially just humans aren't really Designed, designed to have to that, have much, that interaction. much interaction. That makes it time. sound like I'm a fucking mega celebrity. You guess, like I don't get that many DMs, but no. there are certain people who just sort of have message, and I felt guilty about not responding to. But mm-hmm. I'm just like, I know if I take this on, then it's another thing I'm going to stress yeah. over. I find text hard anyway, because as soon as it's like, you don't know if it's just going to open a conversation. You're like, whoa, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just text. Um, anyway, less depressing. Movement, fifty mm-hmm. years time, not just park like parkour movement. Kaylin Chan did that fucking Kong and Pre the other day, like. In, and I think he did it like 15 times before yeah, he Yeah, I saw it. his um, attempts video, which is really Oh, cool. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Is he just banging it? Like, yeah, and some of them he, in the air, he goes, because it's like scary. Oh, shit. He feels like he's going to miss it. And that's, everything about that is disgusting. Like the, But it's just, I feel like every time something gets pushed, mm-hmm. it becomes not the new normal, but like con gainers are normal now. Yeah. Like kids don't grow up thinking, oh, that's a, a wonder trick that only a certain select few people can do. Whereas it's, I grew up thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when Danny first did it, it was like, holy shit, that's the most dangerous fucking yeah. thing I've ever seen in my life. Con- recipe for concussion. Yeah, and then it's still, yourself. it's still like, they're still scary. They're yeah. still horrific, but now they're normal. And now it's like, well, con- mm. Travis has done a few con gainer pre's. Kalen's is obviously the most like mm-hmm. precise. So, I mean, yeah. when, when, how long until a rail now? Because Kalian's accuracy there, I mean, I haven't seen the attempts video. Yeah, he could he lands, have been hitting a rail. Or he lands on it every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could be hitting a rail. He wouldn't necessarily stick it, but he could hit yeah. it. So yeah, you'd hit it. Like, he wouldn't, 
he was never landing like too toesy. So like he could land on like it's always arches been, and bounce off yeah. on attempts and he can be completely fine. It's always been that rumor that Danny Labaka did a Congo Prix to a rail. Really? But like it's just it's just been one of those rumors that's been around for years. But I don't. Do they just say that because Danny's Danny. So I think it's so. Like, oh, yeah. He could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, something that I will add is that my over these years, like my mindset towards watching not mindset, but like watching Kalen do that, I was like, oh, that's sick. But I feel like years ago I would have been more shocked. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it, I'm not saying it's not hard. Like it's fucked. Like thinking about it now makes me more. I think there are shocks that it happened, but it's just. There's just so much crazy shit happening now that like, yeah. I think well, I, I think off. also like people have desensitized, been- Desensitized, that's it. I feel a bit desensitized to crazy stuff. Yeah. Now. And also I think technically someone could have done a Congate Gainer Pre that accurately two years ago. Te yeah. It's, technically. It's the commitment. Isn't it's, it? um, wait, am I being an idiot? Did Travis not do one with a lot of precision at the parkour project? Yeah. Travis has done like a sim- To Travis, like a wall. Travis has done one like- at the parkour project, what, like, like one and a half stories high, because it's in the parkour project, it's on top of the thing. Yeah, down to it. And like, that's that's. It's more. It's I. I don't know what's more fucked. I think Kalen's one is probably because Travis's one had like sprung floor on the other side of it. Maybe it was a all, bit more high difference. And it was all wood. It, the height though of Travis's one is more. When I watched Travis's I one, I mean high, was uh, height, wall, wall to wall rather than. Yeah. But what I mean is like, so like. Well, when, Travis has already done Kong Gainer Prix a lot. It was yeah, just more yeah. that this looked like such a it was Kong very, Gainer Prix. very real world. Yeah. But what I mean is I think with things like that, the Kong Gainer Prix, Travis technically two years ago, whenever he was doing those ones, could have dialed it in and done one to Kalen's standard then. Yeah, he I just, think so. He just didn't. So I yeah, think that's also why- also finding the right spot. The setup, yeah. Because I feel like if, yeah, if Travis saw that, he'd then start wanting to do it. Yeah, so I think that's why someone like you are sort of, it's, I don't think it's so much desensitized, but it's like, oh, okay. It's the feeling, of, it sounds really arrogant, but it's the feeling of, oh, I feel like I could do that if I just had loads of, commitment yeah like, see i don't have that care. feeling but i have the feeling right, of like yeah. i feel like that could have been done sooner yeah. whereas some stuff gets done and you're like holy shit that's the, like i mean mm -hmm. Dom, dom's kong front to be fair uh to be fair to, to kong front pre uh, at imax yeah and like some of the other bigger ones he's done mm -hmm. have been like on a constant progression to that level kind of without any pause yeah uh, i mean he did obviously look at that kong front he was sort of talked about it a year mm -hmm. or so prior but it didn't feel like there was any lag of like, oh, that could have been done sooner. It was mm. like, no, that got done at the earliest convenience it could. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think if, if things can continue at that trajectory, like we've already seen uh, Max do Kong Front at IMAX like that. So it's like, at what stage does the Kong Front become as common as the the, pre, the Kong Free? Yeah. And like things like that. But then well, it, it feels that, it feels like that because there's more and more people obviously getting into parkour anyway. But, yeah. And there's more and more people doing disgusting stuff so it just feels really normal mm. um but yeah it does feel like once you can like do those moves to a scale it doesn't make them less impressive but you more just look at that person's mindset rather than actual move itself and like, I, I always look at dom and i'm like how the fuck do you manage to get your mind to do that yeah because like i can understand how that would work but i'd never be able to make myself go and do it and i'd probably bail it if i did something like that but yeah it's like what is changing in everyone's mindset that's the big thing i think in 50 years just people are going to get stronger in the mind yeah because probably. i think it's because of what you know is already achievable and what the standard is so like it feels so much more attainable and yeah. you can learn quicker like it's just accelerated learning is it almost like being naive like they're gonna people are gonna get into parkour and go oh that's the standard that's fine well, yeah because that's, that's how it is like yeah. i mean you you grow up from age 12 or whatever watching like fat videos and you see how like fluidly they move over let's say like the clips of them mm. over IMAX 2 the other day yeah it's like it looks like nothing but it's all hard yeah stuff. they're yeah. sprinting and just like doing like uh, like reverse full or whatever they called it mm -hmm. and it looks so casual that you're gonna go well if that looks casual obviously it's hard but like mm -hmm. well then I should be able to not do that casually but my, my but movement they work, yeah you'd work in that way and you'd work up to that and like Orlando with a kind standard. of monkey yeah Orlando with a like monkey parkour it's like he makes it look so casual that it's like well that's the level I need my movement to feel so people I think rather than like went back I don't know 10 years ago and it was kind of all like big impactful plyos and things mm. it looked a lot more hard yeah. because I think people are getting stronger and more capable. And actually Max yesterday was talking about something which, I mean, I put down in education because we got- Barker. 
yeah, he, he just said like in 50 years time, like imagine if they're teaching parkour or the fundamentals of parkour movement as like part of PE. So it's not mm-hmm. just like running and hurdles and like obstacle clauses, but it's like, well, yeah. these this this sport has discovered efficient ways to vault. Mm. You think about cat pass, it's like- it's Yeah, it's strange because I feel like that should be taught anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that was a discussion a while ago um, about that it yeah, being yeah, yeah. more on a general basis, but it could help out a lot of people. Oh, for sure. I and, mean, and, and in park where you do, especially in those situations, a lot of it is done properly now anyway, mm. like learning how to Kong and land properly. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, like could stop people hurting themselves and well, they do it in, um, that there is an organization in London. I don't know if they still do, but they're, they're doing it with like geriatric old people mm. to basically increase their, their sort of, or lessen their chances of like, you know, falling over and breaking a hip. It's like, mm simple techniques that can be taught at a fundamental level of just like how to absorb an impact rather than just being like, oh, here I go. Yeah, I like, feel like they just commit to falling. And it's, if it's, they didn't I mean, do if, that, they'd just be like, Ooh. If everyone at school in PE was taught just how to jump off of like, I mean, obviously you have got to think about kind of the implications of a kid does mm. it wrong and they just absolutely ruin their knee. Like they, they, That's the thing, because we did it in, it's in, like kicking in primary school, we did it for a bit. Like you, they'd set up the like horses and stuff and you'd just jump off to the floor they teach and you the old over the top gymnastics role. They, like. Yeah, they teach you over the top gymnastics role or just to land without role, but they never really they never really focus on it. They just get you to do it. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is the wrong thing. It's it's kind and of then you get into gymnastics. secondary school. Yeah, and it goes. And the, that's the time when you need to probably enforce it more because people start putting on more weight because they get like hormones and things and all that. But if you taught it throughout the whole thing, yeah. then they'd stay a lot safer. Well, it's, I, I mean, mobile we, as well. I think. Yeah. We, we have laid in bed, me and Sarah, and, and said, like, well, like, you know, you just, you'd have random conversations. And it's like, imagine if there was a fire. Mm. And because we have Darwin and it's like, shit, how will I we get that sort of thought? Well, it's like, how will house, we get Darwin out yeah. of the house if there was a fire downstairs? And we've got like, I mean, it's basically just a lead, but Sarah was like, maybe we could like, cause he's fucking 38 kilos. We'd have to like lower him out the window or something. <laughs> but it's like, it also makes me think, like, I mean, Sarah, was very very competent at gymnastics but Mm. her jumping from a second story window it's like would she know to sort of because yeah to be fair you could kind of just drop and you'd probably be fine but to a if if everyone was capable to the point where they felt comfortable jumping like a story to a role Mm -hmm. not you needing to utilize it every single day but like the amount of oh yeah and and like general not to sense but you there's all those videos of it's like yeah because there's different ways to do it like i'm looking at things but people might not be watching but yeah just like let's take a story for example and let's say it's a flat wall like just being told like oh you can sit and push off and jump or you can stand and jump or you can go into like cat grab and lower yourself and drop some people don't even know how to do that like the average person can't climb up a wall yeah if they're on top of a wall and they're like oh i need to get down it takes them a few seconds to understand how yeah and really if they're not competent at like taking impact you just have to get on your belly, turn around into a cat grab and drop. And you're only like, yeah, yeah. Your feet are not that far off. Exactly. And people don't see that. Yeah. And like, yeah, the, the, like we are so proficient as sort of animals. Mm. Um, and, and the average person can't like climb up a wall and get to the top of it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's insane. Or yeah. at least without not a huge amount of struggle. And I wonder like, uh, you, I mean, probably just through the growth of parkour, you will probably, I think you'll see more kids trying it out a bit when they're younger maybe not keeping at it, but even if they, mm. you know, for a year, some kids mess around and then they find something else they enjoy. Even if they learn just the basics, like you don't- you Yeah, don't, it's not like I want pe- more people to be into it, but it's just, yeah, having the knowledge. You don't the really knowledge, think, yeah. when a situation does come up, like it's so useful. Yeah, yeah, like being able to pop up a wall or take a drop is not something that you just completely forget. Like I mm. definitely used to be more apt to taking larger drops and being like, yeah, fuck it, I'll just jump off than mm. I am now because I'm older. But yeah. it's not like if you just pushed me off the top of the climb, like the, the highest bit of the, the mess, the descent wall. Oh, yeah. If you push me off the top, my chances would be a hundredfold better than someone who... Oh, yeah. And you and you would try and roll. Yeah. Like you, that's quite high, so it probably hurt. But like, yeah, you, your body will literally default to going like, fuck, I need to take the impact. Yeah, yeah. Well. Rather than like spaz ragdoll. Well, like, yeah, rah! some people would accept like, oh, I'm going to hurt myself badly when they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, that's on a level of... We, we fucking spoke about that for a while, but yeah, I feel like in 50 years time, that could be a potential. Mm. More people learning it generally. 
yeah, yeah as yeah. they grow up we didn't really talk that much about movement but i think that's it's kind of in the same thing like hopefully it just becomes the i think the base level will become more proficient and people will reach that level quicker yeah there'll always be no matter where the sport goes the people who take things in progressive directions whether it's big stuff or flowy stuff or, or sort of whatever but um yeah movement in general is it i meant like we randomly spoke about um generalizing uh, people generally learning it when they're younger and yeah, growing yeah, up. yeah but yeah movement but movement in general i think more ideas will come about like mark's doing the daisy that was a thing yeah some people will pop up with that and maybe more people just getting into parkour for certain styles like hmm. the there's some people who just do rail flow stuff like yeah because i think that already technically exists it's just we'll see those pockets growing yeah because you get that, flat that land skaters and stuff like that yeah it, that existed but I feel like people only looked at it as like a small part of training to grow, to do bigger stuff. Yeah. Whereas I think now people are getting more comfortable with just accepting like, well, I actually just like doing this for now. Did you so see that I'm guy? Do that. Yeah. The guy recently on Instagram who was like doing just like mad rolls on rails into other things. No. I can't remember exactly what he was doing, but it was, it was insane. But like, I, yeah, as you said, I think you will get to those type of people who are more into like, mm. you know, that kind of, that style of movement like circusy flowy acrobatic stuff i was gonna stuff. say circus because when you do circus because i did like the b-tech thing in london you work towards figuring out what you specialize in yeah I'm not saying in park or you even have to do that but as like a really broad term people will just start probably specializing in like something because they prefer doing it yeah yeah for sure you know um but more, I mean, more people could discover a type of movement in parkour. That's what I'm saying. Like monkey or rail or... Uh. Yeah. Imagine if it got to that stage where it's like competitions are like, you know, you have street, like vert and street yeah. and things. It's like, well, yeah, I, I, could, I do just, I mean, but yeah, to be fair, there, I can't remember who it was, but there, there was a rail, a rail competition. flow competition. Uh, so it's I like, like that. I wish I looked more into that because it'd probably be cool to watch. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, stuff like that. Um and I guess that leads us on to competition because I think that is exactly what will happen is we've got mm. for a few years now we've had very uh, like the kind of three big contenders like speed skill style and I think they probably will always sit kind of they'll they'll change and adapt as time mm. goes on but they're the they're the easiest boxes to put parkour in I think mm -hmm. um, obviously especially style from like the the kind of spectator sport um, although I think speed has a lot of potential there's been so many different formats like you know head to head and straight line or blah 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 blah, blah. And like we've everyone always says like you imagine the 100 meter sprint in the olympics but plus obstacles and it's mm -hmm. like nobody's like that sounds shit you're like that yeah, sounds yeah. fucking sick um god i pay a lot to like watch napc right now like in the room <sighs> yeah because i forget how that vibe fun that is yeah. especially especially watching the skill to be honest because it's just so hype yeah and yeah, you just yeah, don't yeah. know that especially when it gets to the end you don't know if people are actually going to get the challenge i think if parkour eventually ever does make it to the olympics that will obviously have a factor in i mean it'll have a factor in everything mm. um but it'll it'll definitely push what the mainstream considers mm -hmm. in a certain direction like the, the grassroots like core of the sport i think will always be its own thing but yeah i mean um, there, there's more things popping up like did ed isn't i might get this wrong street sessions is street that what, sessions, yeah, is yeah, that yeah, what yeah. you called it yeah. so ed's like made that competition a thing i think more people would do things on their own terms like that like just make a competition out of the blue and like just see where it goes yeah for sure um especially like the outdoor street ones because i mean other sports have done that before yeah and weirdly i don't think parkour's had that many um on the spot is one but yeah yeah i'd like to see more of that we, we always talk about doing something don't we but yeah well, exactly. Well, we Actually, should, we, and we talk about that on the Ed one because it's like, I, mean, I, I, well, I don't want to spoil that conversation because it's a nice conversation, but it's like, it's so easy to think, oh, well, we want to host an event or a competition and therefore you go, okay, well, it needs to be at the level of NAPC, but it's like, well, it doesn't. It could just be, start small. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, brands. Mm. Where, what, where are brands going to be? Um, I mean, obviously, like, well, I guess the I mean, big we question. Are, we are a brand. Like, where would we be in 50 years? And then maybe. I don't like, I, I guess 50 that, years is a lot long it's a huge amount time. of time because there's there's skate brands that dominated and then fell off like even supreme is like they supreme used to right they drop every thursday and every so often they used to every so often they would drop their um 
the BOGO, the box logo. And it used to be like queues around the block, mega, mega hype and all that. And now like they've, I saw some news thing recently, like they dropped their BOGO and it's like a one year event, once a year event, like huge, normally it's massive and just like it didn't sell out immediately. So it's like, it's hard to stay mm. sort of yeah. at the top, so to speak, um, especially as, as people age and, and I mean, yeah. That's where I really feel like we just got to personally for our, for our brand, just hone in on what we really enjoy doing and what we can see ourselves doing for the next 50 years without. I don't know what I enjoy doing. <laughs> I don't know what fun is. Yeah, that's right. Um, you well, then there you go. Just run off that. <laughs> run off what? <laughs> <laughs> this is my big thing. This is my existential crisis. <laughs> but like that, you know, obviously we want to grow and we are going to grow, but getting to like the size of Supreme or like some hype brand. Oh, I don't know what I don't, I don't really care about getting that big. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, like I, I'd, I'd want to be just that company that on the inside, everyone's just always enjoying it. Like it, it would be it is, obviously, they, yeah, obviously external money, i.e. non-parkour mm. practitioners is, I mean, I think any parkour brand is gonna, well, until, until the parkour community grows bigger and also becomes more willing to support with their money. Mm. Growing a brand simply based off of just the community is like, it's tough, it's fucking hard. Like, uh, but once you can tap into a market outside of that, things obviously get easier. And there's, there's huge amounts of potential to do that in many, many, many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. it's, I, I think the way I would like to see Motus, if it still exists in 50 years, is like, I guess, similar to some of the bigger name like skate brands or streetwear brands that although have like that slight mainstream attention like people know i don't know like we're into clothing and street stuff and parkour mm -hmm. and you like skateboarding and things like this like so we're aware of a lot more brands than the average person on the street i would say mm. like you know just yeah joe blogs who only know supreme and and sort of the big the big boys I don't really care about being a big boy, but it would be nice to be known by the people who, who matter. Yeah. If you know what I mean. I, I'd like, like to get to that At the same time, well. I don't want to be so fucking small that like only the real nerds, like the parkour nerds know. Like, Yeah, exactly. So. But I mean, I, I've only listened to a, a few brand stories, so there's obviously like loads of them, but like when you listen to Patagonia's one or what's the snowboarding one? Bur Burton, Burton, yeah. Like those ones, when, when they talk about the the inners of their brand, like how their staff works I and, think the, and the like relationships in with each other, yeah. like colleagues and stuff. That's so that, much more important to exactly. me. Exactly. And that I can see why they've lasted and I can see why they still like doing what they're doing. Yeah. So I, w I would much rather get to the stage where we just have enough like capital and sales and everything to sustain a team of, I don't know, yeah. 10, 10, 15, 20 people and the work environment is fucking sick. Everyone mm -hmm. loves their job. No you one's know, worrying it, about money. It's the, it's like, the yeah, the, yeah. the Burton Patagonian me uh, methodology, whatever the word is. It's like let my people go surfing. It's it's you know yeah. they have a certain amount of surf or they have a certain amount of snow, and it's like cool. Close the office, everyone chills out. Yeah, blah 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 blah. Exactly. Um, rather than just being like fucking huge, but that's a personal thing. But mm. I think brands in general. Well, I think we'll, we'll see we'll see, see, see more brands grow because fifty years is a long time, like we said. But I think we'll see more brands grow outside of parkour and still have that parkour base like mm -hmm. that's what they base their clothing off of movement and things which is kind of what we're trying and we'll to obviously see a lot of brands but they'll get into like the streetwear industry or another industry and like that i think they're hopefully there'll be a few crossovers like some people will wear clothes for hiking that are actually parkour clothes or yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And i think an example, i think but. we'll also see people brands that are solely out i mean we've already kind of seen it solely outside stick their fingers in and yeah, and especially and things like the Olympics will, if that happens once again, mm -hmm. for the better or for the worse, you never know. Will that things like that will factor it? Um, but yeah, it's super super interesting, and I think we will see a huge amount of growth and and death of brands because it's running a business is fucking hard, and mm -hmm. like even even I don't know, a beer company or a coffee company or blah blah like there's so many brands that exist for 10 15 years and technically are massively massively successful but don't sustain mm -hmm. like 50 years is legacy shit that's big boy shit because mm -hmm. once you kind of reach that point you're probably good enough that you're going to be there for like unless you've you know a few hundred struggle years for 50 years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just crawling along like that'll be that'll be us i'll be i'll be 80 80 fucking two still still struggling still here like 
Oh, Welcome God. back to episode 4,796 of the Murders Podcast. Huh? What episode are we on? 92, I think it is. Wow. Not including, like, the NAPC ones and stuff yeah. like that, so... What are we going to do for 100? Get really pissed. Yeah. I don't know. And we did that for many of the early episodes anyway, yeah, so... I haven't, done, I haven't done that in a while. Yeah. We'll get someone on, like, who we... are not saying we don't care about our guests, but get someone on who's, like, not from the parkour community. Phil. Phil. <laughs> Phil. Not Doyle. Yeah, no, I know no. who you mean. From your, from your village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phil. We can just talk about music and drink and... Oh, that'd be great. Ask him about parkour. You get him in there, try and do some... That'd be amazing. Parkouring. Someone like that. Vloggy's met Phil. He'd, be, he'd become like some sort of ominous character that has just popped in it once. It'll be like, guys, episode like, 200. Phil back. Yeah, Phil's, <laughs> episode 200, Phil's back. Yeah, yeah. We should do it. I'm uh, so down. But, yeah. Um... What's what's next? I mean, we got industry, but that's kind of also. Oh, it's not just brands, but yeah. I think the gym space will be a really interesting one. I think over the last best part of the decade, a lot of gyms have mm -hmm. appeared for the the struggles of high rent, insurance issues, etc., 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 like pricing issues, attendance issues. Mm -hmm. um, there there have been many, 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 many more gyms than successful gyms. I think there will still be many, many more gyms that essentially aren't able to sustain themselves long term it's but so then I hard think, as well because it's not always their fault oh no like a lot of the time there's so many factors when it comes to running a physical space that relies on the attendance of physical people and i mean covid obviously just absolutely demolished the scene for a lot of people mm. um and you know the next super i mean we might we might all be dead in 50 years time yeah well the apocalypse could we, we might get another fucking super bug or something or well actually to be fair all the microchips that are now implanted in everyone are you know once the government they activate once the government that. hits that switch we're all fucked yeah, so yeah. exactly that um what happens if all the oil runs oh. well we just you know do we need oil i don't no. know no it's fine or what was the thing you were talking about the other day the solar flare. solar flare oh that'll just knock out the internet and everything else yeah, but that might happen before 50 years. Yeah, that's quite likely. That, and it happen. sounds like, oh, just knock out the internet. Yeah. We are. We are the internet. The internet. Yeah. 50% internet nowadays. Um, yeah, gyms. I, I've, I've said this before, but I want to see more gyms um, start emulating spots more. Not spots that exist, but look more like outside without making the gym shit. Without making it because, a cliche as because well. Because I, I thought maybe it was like a few years ago i was like oh, i want to see a gym that entirely looks like outside and like the materials and things and there's like maybe a fake shop front with like a classic double column like walls coming out yeah yeah yeah, to, yeah just to look good but then i really like a gym like how five where it's all wood yeah and oh, i haven't even trained in it but just looking at people training it it's just the surfaces look good it's, it's all clean all of it's like the same and aesthetically and maybe it's just nice for my brain to look at i yeah. don't know where the balance is but i just want to see more things pop up like um oh, i always compare fucking skating everyone does nowadays so it doesn't matter but you know like in skateboarding sometimes they've put even like curbs like real curbs yeah in in, because, in a skate park. and not just because like maybe yeah that looks cool but also it you then learn stuff on that and you can take it outside i think so there's a number of factors that come into my head when i think about stuff like that you where you have like you look at like a tempest gym mm. and the the bright colors and things appeals to the market that brings in the yeah, most this is, that it is brings the in the thing, most it? money it won't look as like safe and soft for them to bring in kids and stuff and that's where it. the most money comes from is the lessons yeah exactly so there's that factor there's also the factor that because i remember years ago you saying like oh i'd just be sick if like that you tell a gym and like you know in one area it was just like i think you said like a picnic table and a couple of other things like very mm. minimalist mm -hmm. i think one issue there is you have the fact that for a lot of countries england specifically the square footage is incredibly expensive it would and be you're, like you'd be wasting that space yeah really. and from a from a an, an investment standpoint of like okay well we need to teach a lesson in this we, yeah. need, well, we need to have like three different classes it's mm -hmm. like well we need each area to be applicable yeah. and, th and there's, there's so and, many factors. and my mind's changed over time like since training in the old workshop and this workshop and also underground gym when i was working there like you do need to just utilize the space as much as possible because yeah parkour is like that i think it and would be really day, cool the, the doing it is the fun part anyway so it's yeah like, it would be really cool to get gyms that are like half inside half outside mm, yeah i think from unless you own 
Loggy's waving. Turn his mic up. Spin that shit. I mean, you guys must be aware of BGI Academy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that the one in Denmark? Example. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's like Denmark. brutalist, outdoorsy, concrete yeah. indoor and outdoor. Yeah. It's massive. It's it so, looks yeah. sick. That's what I was going to say. So there's a few examples already. I, I think the bed, the, it's hard to do that kind of thing unless you own it because of, mm. I mean, there's so much insurance shit when it Isn't comes to- Isn't that gym massive? Yeah, is it really big? The, I think it's still the world's biggest, actually. Is it? Does it still exist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, people just don't go there. The Bro, gym, the, there's so many, go, like, Danish... We, there soon? we should. But it's a uni- is it a university or it's a co- school? It's a school, which school? does, like, other things. How do they get that it's, on a school? Is it because it's Denmark? It's Denmark. Yeah. But this is the thing. Which, there's so many, like, Danish amazing places, and it's like, where, where's the product of that? Like, you have the environment, but where's the product? Like, obviously, there's a load of sick Danish people, but mm. it's not like you're constantly seeing, like, wow... Here's the next Jared and Hulu who's been born out of this Danish school gym thing. Mm. Like Olerup is a much better hub, I think, because I think it seems to spur on a bit more, I guess, community and things. Like, yeah, I and Olerup's is. another example. They've got indoor and outdoor, but every time I've been there, it's snowed. So, I know, yeah. Um, also, to be honest, How Five have an outdoor bit too. Very think, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that does look really cool. How Five is one of the premier gyms in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, like it's. I, well, I can. I haven't been there, and I, I agree with you. It's like, so everyone sick. said good shit about yeah. it. So. And and Nico and uh, Git Git, I think his name is. And Gert, yeah. If Nico or Gert is listening. I don't know if they do listen to yeah, every episode. The other name, but yeah, they're fucking legends. So please invite us over. We but, train with you. Yeah, I think. I think to be honest, we can probably just be like, hey, you got free time? Can we yeah. come? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think. I think. There's, there's also the possibility that parkour won't really be as big as it is now in 50 years time. Like you look at inline skating and things and other sports and some things do have a, a peak and then they, although to be fair, inline is coming back. It is. Yeah. There's that guy that Jimmy shared that's like, I've seen loads of people. When I went to the indoor skate park a couple of weeks ago, there was more inline really? raiders and the people who I was skating with were like, yeah, it's weirdly just starting to come back. Like wow. it, they're outnumbering everyone else. And, wow. I, and it's all older people, so you can see it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of got. I mean, I I, I bladed when I was a kid, not like hugely, but I could jump little stair sets and things. Really? And like, yeah. I think it's a the barrier to entry is a lot lower than skating. Like, you put me mm-hmm. on a board, I'm falling over, but the mm-hmm. wheels attached to my feet, so I just got to stay upright and not mm-hmm. break something. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Or maybe I won't because I might be dead. <laughs> not not because I'm going to kill myself. I mean, I might be 82, and you know, I eat a lot of pizza. So. <laughs> It's not just, just be made of pizza. Yeah. Well, I think I'm more saying I'll have a heart attack and die. Yeah. Um, we had some other topics. Are you? Why are you laughing? Sorry. He's laughing because. Hey, you know what? I have in the freezer. I got a pizza. It is pizza pie it's Friday. Pie none Friday. of us. It's pizza pie Friday. I installed this in the office a year ago, maybe, and you guys never adhere to it, mainly because no. you're vegan and you can't eat cheese. Yeah, but it's good vegan pizzas. Are just expensive, aren't they? Yeah, that is the problem. People yeah. are like, vegan's fine. It's like, yeah, if you want to eat potatoes, but if you want a good vegan pizza, it's expensive. It's expensive. I've bought wraps to make some as well, so. Uh, the old wrap pizza, the diet really? option. Mm. Yeah. The pesto. Yeah, how's our, um, so good. How's our battery time. life on that camera? We are running in at 24%. Oh, we're chilling. All right, nice. 89, full. Cool. <laughs> um, 89. 89. How has the pandemic affected parkour growth or not? I, th- I think we kind of spoke about this with regards to we've there's there's been a very a lot of like very prosperous teams that have been aided by being like location like fat is probably a prime example there and then do you mean may, like maybe it's given the opportunity for the people together to shine through a lot more yeah than i think i think initially as with everything in the world there was a dip in probably output from <laughs> max, max sneezing <laughs> max sneezing in the other room fucking hell um there's probably a dip in output for a very brief period of time, but I don't think it really has affected. I'm well, we've already said it affected gyms massively. Mm. It's affected some of those things, but I don't think it's really had an effect on like how much it's grow. I think it's continued to grow at the same pace. And I think it could have, to be honest, you never know. Like if, if we could see what it would look like without COVID, it might've even grown more with COVID online. Maybe because maybe we maybe the socials got pushed. We would have been able to do cool shit, and we're the yeah. best. Therefore, growth. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um. But but I mean, like online, it yeah. seems to be like. Ah, just more but then more. maybe because of it, more people were spending more time online, so they maybe like people. Yeah, that's what I mean. The amount of YouTube rabbit holes. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying if it hadn't happened, it would have gone up. Oh no, that's what I mean. I think that's what. Yeah, people probably think that, but what if? 
yeah covid made parkour grow more online yeah because at the end of the day the internet is definitely the the biggest factor of kind of Mm -hmm. everyone's like yeah growth really especially because it's parkour's mostly on instagram now it's like that's what a lot of people use anyway so i can imagine any instagram rabbit holes like reels or tiktok or whatever parkour probably grew yeah 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 and grew and grew um and yeah as i was saying like definitely some teams have really prospered because it's been like i mean we got not fucked but like it as i said in a previous episode it's it made it really really hard for motors con- to continue being what motors kind of was mm. and then since then people's lives have changed and things aren't quite the same i don't think they ever will be mm-hmm. um so we're kind of you know not starting from the start again but it's like thing- things no, have changed. things are just changed and it's fine yeah um but yeah and, and some people fat etc have done really really well because it's been like we're all together let's mm. grind and it's it's really working out for them which is sick mm-hmm. um that actually leads us on to the whereabouts of the tmp team because as, as somebody sort of pointed out very there's some some people are very very absent um not not i don't mean that in a negative way i, I guess just from a outside perspective it's like well, yeah i mean everyone's fairly transparent about their position within the team and stuff anyway like, yeah yeah as far as i'm aware um i, I guess I, I, so. it's one of those things we're doing different things like yeah some people aren't training as much anymore and they're 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 literally pursuing different things in their life so it doesn't make sense for them to like have that commitment yeah i mean the big the big one that came up in the question was somebody said like where's luke and luke kind of is i guess unofficially not in motor i don't really know what i don't know but there was no like this this is the hard things i think people would always take this the wrong way because there was no like fallout or anything but he is getting on with his life now and, and he's living in spain and he's, he's living in spain and we kind of had a chat a while ago about like people's commitment to the brand and he was like yeah i'm not kind of i'm, mm-hmm. I'm sort of not not down for it and it was like cool like yeah but it wasn't like i didn't feel like we need to do some big announcement and be like no sort of blah, 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 this person's left da, 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 da. like the, the team's because out of if he this is the thing if he st- st- like stayed mm. not saying that he's fully left like he's just yeah but like if he stayed things would be exactly the same because he's gone off and he's doing his own thing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we'd still like see him. Like if we see him now, it's still the same sort of thing. We, the, 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 like, that, but. the dynamic of the whole team is, is, is really fucking hard to be honest. And I've, I've spent so much time over the years beating myself up at different periods of being like, it's my fault because I'm a bad like leader of like, how do I corral people to sort of mm. get more involved and, and give more and things when it's, it's very hard to then give like to to give back the adequate amount when it's like for youtube i don't know making a youtube video or whatever mm-hmm. it's it's fucking tough like i really i don't know the exact answer to the whole solution but we're just sort of taking every every day as it comes i guess mm-hmm. um but w- the one thing we are just trying to do is just well i think really we're trying to just let things run its course and control the things that we can definitely control which is some of the stuff we're doing here and then letting people i mean like tra- someone like travis for example we brought him on and like He's a, a massive, massive asset, and we've yet to really like utilize him on huge projects apart from Soul. Mm. Um, but he's killing it on YouTube, and it's like I don't. Part of me is like, oh, I fucking know, I'd love it if Travis did that for Motus. But it's like, well, at the end of the day, he needs to build his own personal yeah. brand, and it's working out really well for him. So it's like you can't you can't hinder that. Mm-hmm. Um, like obviously, if everyone in the team worked just towards the brand, we'd see probably more growth. Mm-hmm. But you, yeah. But then it's like some people just don't want that. They want like to work for motors, but also bring themselves up and work on their own shit. Um, Yeah. So like you're completely right. We'll just control what we can from in here. Yeah. Um, And then let parkour videos come when they come because that seems right. Exactly. Um, Um, We're going to have a a DPD delivery in the next 45 minutes probably. So if we get a, a, a knock at the door, maybe Bloggy can run and get it. Um, nice. nice. Somebody said dealing with stress. Don't ask me. Mm-hmm. You know, ask Max. If he was in uh, I reckon Max bowls it up. I reckon he's gonna fucking explode one day. Like I reckon he thinks he sometimes he, does when I'm being really silly. Yeah, I sometimes reckon it turns on. I reckon he will just absolutely snap and like just kill an old lady or something, <laughs> or a sheep. Not actually an old lady, but yeah, no, maybe joking. a sheep. Maybe we'll just obviously just. Yeah. I don't know murder a sheep no i don't know like uh deal with stress talk to people be open mm-hmm. 
it depends. Like, I'm I mean, I, think. I, I was saying to Sarah, it's so fucking weird because I, if I build stuff up in my head, it takes me to the edge of the world kind of thing. But then like that trouser thing, although it's very stressful and in the moment was like, oh shit. At the same time, like I was kind of laughing about it. Cause it's like, it's like, it's a very physical challenge. It's like, well not physical, but it's a real thing to deal with. So it's like, mm. cool. How do we dig ourselves out of this? Like I sent that message to you. It's like, our back's against the wall. We need to like get out of this. Whereas if it's just like, I'm sitting at home and I've got stress in my head, it just cycles and it cycles and it cycles. Yeah, that's true. That's so worse. don't do that, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, Thinking about things too much. Actually, Max said the same, uh, something similar to this. We had a conversation with, like if you're stressed and you're trying to like work it out in your head while you're stressed or like working out to fix the stress, it almost doesn't it's work. It's nearly impossible, because I reckon. Because you just keep digging like in your head. You're like, even if you think you're trying to work it out, it's like, well, a few hours have gone by and you're still sitting there like, Well, and also I think head. like you can- But yeah. everyone's different. I'm yeah. Would probably easily just think and go, ah, oh, okay. If I'm in a negative headspace, a technically correct solution can be put down. So like somebody could be like, oh, why don't you try this? And I'm like, nah, fuck it, it won't work. Like, mm. or whatever. Like, and I, I definitely fall, follow that. Like, no, I'll be talking to my mom and she'll suggest something. And I'll be like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. But actually it's like, the suggestion isn't dumb. It's just my headspace is bad. Oh yeah. But so I, like you have to I get completely understand out that. of that first. Yeah. So. No, I completely understand that. It's so hard to, especially when you're in a mood and someone's like, oh no, it's fine. Just meditate or something yeah, like, yeah fuck yeah. off but really it's like what? <laughs> but, fuck yeah, off. but really it's like whoa that would probably help quite a lot but. yeah yeah i yeah. like active meditation like walking rather than yeah yeah sitting just stews it over mm -hmm. um i feel like we're now just going through questions but i guess that's kind of why we put that thing on instagram but somebody yeah. said thoughts on star Wars new shoe which we were privileged to try on the other day yeah they're sick actually yeah they're um they're definitely a massive step up from their 10. Oh, I think actually the question was like thoughts on the new Star of 10s, but as far as I'm aware, they probably, I don't think they'll be called the 10s. No, they're a different probably shoe. not. Cause when, yeah. The 11s. The 11s. Yeah, no, I, I really like these new ones, but um, I mean, every, I think most of you've probably seen them if you watch their videos, which everyone does watch their videos cause yeah. they showed them off, didn't they? I but I mean, what can we kind of add to that? Because we've tried them on and I, we've actually I, felt I think, them. I think I, I mean, I didn't train in them because they were too small for me. Although they fit fitted me better than I thought. Um, they're pretty comfy. From a, they're like socky kind of yeah, shoes. Yeah, I but with a bit more. Kind of looking at them, I was like, they don't look like they like for ankle rolls and things. They look scary, but the guys seem to train in them fine. So I guess mm -hmm. they've got more support than looks. And the grip, the grip like looks sick. Mm -hmm. the, the pattern. Yeah, I really like the sole of it. Yeah. It's all one piece, and it's like got the little Athle stars. As athletic, <laughs> athletic, athletically, as aesthetically. They're a sick shoe. Like they're definitely mm -hmm. not for everyone, but at the same time, they looked better on like because we weren't we were wearing like the straight legs and things. Yeah, it's like I was confused whether I'd suit them or not, but they kind of looked all right. I don't know. I'd have to train in them. They're just like they're a slight. They're a, they're it's a techie because shoe. Because yeah, because they're like techy and sporty, and that's more just personally. Because I if anyone can see me them. squirming on camera, by the way, I really need to piss. I'm kind of like mm. really, but I'm fine. You um, can go if you want. No, it's fine. I can hold it. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, obviously this would change, but uh, I don't think they're the final ones because they're still trying to work out um, the actual material of the bottom of the shoe, which yeah, I'm really glad to hear because it means that they're just fucking working on it hard. And like, they said it probably won't be out for like until maybe this year, like the end of this year. Yeah, because like the ones they were training in at the moment, it was like really grippy on rails and perfect, but on brick at the moment, it wasn't quite right. So they're still working on that. But yeah. that should mean that when they come out, like they should have, I mean, they've probably thought of everything, so. Yeah, fresh to you death. Know. Yeah, and also they're, they're pretty thin compared to the 10s. Like, they're, they're not super thin, but like you can feel yeah. stuff. I'd say they're a low impact shoe Yeah, for, for most people. Um, but obviously you can stick an insole in. Yeah, they're not, they're not going to be for everyone in every application, but they're definitely going to tick most mm -hmm. boxes, I would say. Yeah, I think they're so. a fucking massive step in the parkour shoe world, though. Yeah. What? Big, big step. Oh, my laces are undone, speaking of shoes. Uh, something kept going under my foot and I didn't know what it was. Um, <laughs> the, the, this this was an interesting question. Is this because someone sent it in? What, they, what would a Motus gym or shop look like? They would be the same thing. Yeah. I mean, it would be cool. Like, I say it would be cool to have a physical shop. And I see people talk about it occasionally. It's, it is cool, but it wouldn't really Very hard to sustain unless parkour was... Like, I think there's a... 
um there's a there's a long route of like getting parkour clothing accepted in sort of general like street skate those kind of you know the shops that are like streetwear but they 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 cater to like skate and bmx styles mm. that's almost like i think like the barrier to entry i think mm. unless your brand falls into the streetwear hands and a lot of people accept it as like streetwear inspired by parkour mm. you would struggle to just have a brick and mortar parkour store that only caters to a parkour audience unless that was outside imax yeah. like and even then your client base is going to be fairly repetitive yeah and also um, parkour people don't really like to spend much money still <laughs> i love this stigma like we keep fucking i feel but, so bad but, every time i say no, it no but that's fine because i'm exactly the same i haven't bought clothes in fucking ages yeah but you do get them for free like i know but even if i didn't get them for free i'd probably still just charity shop them or something yeah because i yeah it's, Which, it's and isn't that sounds so bad it's just i, I don't, don't know how we almost need you know how like I guess you technically started the Save Your Clips thing, but Kieran like championed it. Yeah. We need like splash your cash, like hashtag splash <laughs> your cash. <laughs> Spend and more it's money. Like, well, it's like support. Yeah, well, when not on like some bullshit, but yeah. so we need like. But we are we are gonna put like we th this is like the plan for us. Like we want to push that product mm. style where it, I mean it will probably cost a lot more, but really push the fact that this is gonna last fucking ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what people should be paying for, like when they pay a lot of money it shouldn't just be for style like obviously you should like it but the more money goes into like the quality and yeah and all of that which so we are blogging just working. shaking it's not shaking yeah, his head exactly. he's nodding his head furiously he, yeah this is the reason he is here and bloggy's already shown us some fucking bloggy, interesting in shit. one in three words what would be your 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 goal or kind of what what what's the thing you're most excited to kind of like what? see in parkour clothing or like bring to the table in parkour clothing in what, like him personally in the next 10 years see someone do both just both like uh, you know he could be like really cool bags so but i want <laughs> like three words i like the fact you said in the next 10 years because that's a nice window uh, yeah yeah um is this three words three that's words so mean three words <laughs> three words two questions <laughs> ethical sustainable s sick <laughs> That was the most like nice answer well, that was uh, is well, so vague. No, okay, well um, three words is vague. Go you on. could say like function well, yeah, like, over feet. Function over feet. Well I was gonna say fashion, but it's like fashion's fashion, that's subjective. I okay. mean I think it's all about the balance of that. You can't have something that's works really well but looks shit because no one will buy it. Mm. Um subjective. It is exactly, but I think the three pillars of it being able to stand up is like, does it work? Does it last? Does it look sick? Yeah. yeah. That's it's literally like, as simple as that. And yeah. then, and then does it hurt people or the planet, et cetera? Yeah. Like, it should be just an unspoken aspect, I suppose, really, shouldn't it? Yeah, that's kind of, I think, the end goal for everyone, but mm. not everyone, because some people mm. are scumbags. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask Bloggy if there's anything specific he wants to see, like, clothing wise in 50 years a park or like brand do but then i mean 50 years hopefully we're all flying and yeah like, but then, so but then i don't want you to like give away any crazy ideas because well, if they're in your brain we're doing them. I, i've literally got like a book full of just stuff that we're going to be working all right on. opposite what's the thing you will actively try not to do and the product that you <laughs> hate and you don't want to see like is there anything that exists these? just don't want onesies. To see. onesies i saw a park <laughs> video they were like this onesie company advertising like people doing parkour in it and i was like no yeah I used to get in the bin like i used to do some cringy shit but mm, what, about, what about dungarees i could i could vibe that i actually yeah. saw i saw a woman I, vibe them. I saw a woman who was she was she was old she was like fully gray haired like i don't know she was probably in her 50s yesterday mm. in sainsbury's wearing dungarees and she just looks sick really like, yeah and in this area like and i don't mobile. know if, no, no, not that old. But like, if you're in, if you're in London, <laughs> no, wait, what? she look like she could just be like run around and get. Oh, some fun. <laughs> sorry, I thought you said with a mobile, like a walker. Um, yeah, yeah, but it was more like in. I don't know. You go to London, you see, you go to trendy areas, you see some fashionable people. But this is Staplehurst, and mm. she looks sick. And I literally almost was like, "You look like I so almost just because she was walking past me and went like, so, like you that's a really, really good. good outfit.' Yeah, like, but you know." Don't want to mm. be a perv. <laughs> not that it was at all pervy. I but. know, but it's hard to just yeah. Yeah, randomly say something like that. Um, I'm not thinking. But I don't know. A gym, a gym, 
I, I've spent years where I had a period of a couple of years ago where I was obsessed with the idea of making a gym and I thought it was going to be an absolute certainty of what Moritz was going to do. Maybe it will happen in the future. I would love to. At the same time, uh, the more I looked into it, the more sort of stuff I did, the, there are there are significant hurdles and hard things to do uh, that just... I don't know. There's there's other stuff that's more important to me at the time at the moment. If Mo has got to the stage where like we could make it happen and I didn't have to be the one sort of managing it so much, but more just like making it happen, then then probably mm. yes. Uh the thing I think and I've spoken about this before, we've spoken about this, like there's not a single gym I've ever been to that feels as feels like it's doing enough with regards to making you know, a kid a kid comes in for a birthday party and he brings 10 of his friends and some of those friends have never done parkour before. And they go into that like foyer entrance thing and it's like there'll be some scraggly gym t-shirt like just stuck up on the wall with a coat hanger and things. And like, if you're lucky, one little monitor playing like an, an old parkour video. But I think there is so much gyms could be doing more to display the, the culture and, and the depth of what goes on in parkour I, I, kind of visually and aesthetically that make people think, wow, sick. There's more to this than being like a load of wooden blocks in a, essentially a shed. Yeah, yeah um, true. I didn't think about that. And like some gyms, you walk straight in and you're in the action and there's the parkour equipment. But what you were then seeing is just the gym, the representation of like, the, all you're seeing, if, the representation of parkour is the gym. But I think gyms have a, an incredible opportunity to represent parkour mm. as a whole because they have a physical space. And they, I mean, they're amazing. I like speaking of, um, how five again they do an amazing thing where they do video of a week uh, video of the week and they they give their kids homework to go and watch videos and like <laughs> and it's sick and and they'll have that it on a so whiteboard good. and things that's so good um yeah I, I never thought about especially for those parties and people coming in but it's like so you i think want having them, especially for the first time you want them to experience and that's that i think is another step of like it. before we get to brick and mortar stores it's we should have wholesale options like wholesale is hard because of the margins when it comes to a lot of parkour clothing like the margin is not there to do wholesale pricing but for gyms do you have shops that stock more than just the one scraggly gym t-shirt which has been designed by like the gym owner's nan or whatever um if, if kids can go in and it's like oh sick they've got the new Stora collection oh they've got the new Stora shoes or they've got motors or they've got fat or whatever like i just mm -hmm. named three english brands there but like that i think is, is a step that we should be moving in um and there's a number of things to to do to get there, but I think I think it's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. My bladder is just screaming, <laughs> screaming. I mean, that was technically the last kind of question thing yeah. we had. Um, how long has this been going? Uh, you, an hour and eleven minutes. Jesus Christ! Yeah. We've been holding it for an hour. No, but probably like an hour and nine minutes. Oh. Um, Where have all the teams gone? Is that just me not Where like looking out? The teams is, is that just me not looking hard enough? I think neither of us are probably as good as we should be at like finger on the pulse. What does that mean? Like paying attention to everything. Yeah, probably. Um, but I think they're, they're all around. People are doing bits. Mm. I've got an excuse. I've got a baby. I have to go home and change nappies. I've got a, like something. <laughs> you got a broken laptop screen. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, and a oh. chip in my windscreen. Oh, nice. Rock came up and hit it. Nice. Uh, what, the fucking Dwayne Johnson? Huh? Dwayne oh, yeah, he just came, <laughs> came up and hit it while I was while while just, while about to, just about to start my car and he came in and went, bang! Have you, I, I've, I've, I sent you that song. Yeah. That? Yeah, yeah. Awful. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I mean, <laughs> you, you've... Oh, there it is. Go on, bloggy. <laughs> we'll, uh, yeah, people love to just absolutely spam that doorbell. Yeah, at least they don't just open and walk all the way in. like Which does happen very did. often. There's some weird thing about commercial buildings where people just open the door and just walk all the way in. And like, they'll, be, sta the they'll be standing here. Yeah, what is in the bag? I can't say on the podcast. Oh, I was going to say, can we open it in front of them? Max has just peeked his head out. Through the we put curtains up on the deep work room so that people can sustain their pleasures. Uh, we're not opening on the podcast. Just put it, put it down there. It's a private, private thing. Yeah, yeah. Is that uh, exciting? Moderately exciting. Not that exciting. Yeah, yeah at least that's better than you saying that. Yeah. Um, All right, I need to go and basically respond to a billion customer service emails and sort so this should, trouser should fiasco. We, we'll do this next time because we can ask whoever's on. What the the last thing? Fuck the fans. Fuck do the music fans talk. Do music talk. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we should bring like music minute? Just bring it back. 
like at some point because we've had enough time the, the problem with music minute is that obviously we 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 both listen to moderately three two oh. one go me yep oh fuck um shit that's not fair you're meant to like know what you're going to talk about before uh okay well three two th- one go oh, yeah, suddenly i've got music uh, to talk about um Oh fuck! I don't know who I've been listening to. Mate, I stopped and started to give you this brief period, and now you've just said um fuck again. <laughs> Help me, bloggy. Help me, someone. <laughs> That's so fucking helpful. It's good, oh, he's saying Aurora. Yeah. To be fair, what have we got? What have I got? Thirty seconds. You thirty-five. Well, what have we been listening to here? I don't know. We've been li- bloggy's been. This listening- is why we don't do music minute yeah, anymore. Yeah. Bloggy's been listening to a lot of good stuff. I don't need Bloggy. No, 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 no. No one cares about my opinion. And this is where people turn the podcast <laughs> off. <laughs> I have been listening. To be fair, I've just been listening to a lot of the same stuff I usually listen to. So, fuck it. That's it. Yeah, maybe we don't do Music Minute anymore. <laughs> that was a 48 second yeah, test of. That, that was horrible. Yeah. I mean, before well, I knew what I was going to. We'd know what we were The problem talk is, about. we started off so strong, and I reckon I converted half the parkour fan base to. Fan base? Community yeah. to Arcane Roots, that- and then they split up. <sighs> Yeah, that was your fault. Yeah. No, I think, yeah. Also, we don't really, I don't say, I don't think I discover so much new music every week. I actually think I probably discover more at the moment. I'm being quite really fingers in pies actively. Can we not like, just because I do miss music talk anyway, can we not do a thing where we like time it so both of us can just talk about music in general? Doesn't mean that we have to bring up certain stuff. Yeah, I did say to Jared, we should just start our own podcast where we talk about music. What you and Jared, or like us three? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Just like, just, uh, just. I mean, you a two always body. find crazy new shit. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Sorry, everyone's left now. I know. Come back to those of you still here. Here's Come a back. here's a discount code. Prod me. Oh, the people who left. You get ten percent off. Uh, yeah. Should we should we wrap this up? Because I need a wee. Yeah, we fine. can open this package. Yay! Yay! Buy the trousers. Yeah, they're, I mean, like we said, they're not shit. They're just not as but, good as we thought they would be. Keelan's now standing on a chair. Is he gonna? Yeah, he's gonna do it. As long as I can't see. Keelan is wearing the straight legs in olive in extra large. He's standing on a desk, which is so fragile. They look fine. I like them. I'm that is another them. reason to head to YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I just stood on the table. Yeah. Um, rate us on Spotify and that stuff, because that's a thing now, and on iTunes. Uh, head to the website and send us voice messages, please, because it will be fun when we have enough to like make an entertaining episode out of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, support Camilla support everyone else love yourself love you mm-hmm. anything else and who do you want to see on the podcast next it won't be next but it's Ed eventually Scott. and after that it's probably George McGowan because he's coming here mm-hmm. so who do you want to see after that let us know mm-hmm. bye love you <laughs> bye <laughs> if I speak over this then hopefully Sleep Token won't copyright us yeah can't we just do, have a little do, 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 do.